Welcome to the World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. Each week, we'll have tips from former number one, Yvonne Lendl, a roundtable with the best journalists in the sport. And each week, someone will be holding court with Justin. This week, it's Maria Sharapova. Maria took time out from a commercial shoot in LA to talk about her fiance, her amazing comeback from injury, and the importance of her foundation. Next. The World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas, starts now. Well, let's welcome to the world of tennis one of the most iconic figures in sports and entertainment, three-time Grand Slam champion Maria Sharapova. Thank you for spending some time with us. Maria, you've been through so much the past couple of years. What keeps you motivated? The game of tennis. You know, I really, I really love what I do. I love waking up and you know, knowing that I can be a better player and going out on the court. And as much as I don't like to practice, I know that that's what ultimately makes you better. And, um, and it's exciting. Um, you know, I've had a great year so far and, um, and there's a, still a big part of it ahead. So, um, you know, you just keep moving forward. With all the issues you had with your shoulder, major surgery, all the rehab, at any point did you ever think, I'm just going to give it up and enjoy the benefits of all the things that your success has brought you? I got to enjoy a, a few more things that I probably would, um, that I wouldn't have the chance to when I had a, you know, the full season and the full years, but then I realized that they weren't as fun as holding the big trophies, <laughs> and that's really what, um, what I love, and I love working towards that goal, so I, I was really limited and I couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't allow myself to get better, and that, you know, that made me think a lot, and, um, you know, about life, and um, if I'd ever get the chance, of course, you have your moments and your doubts, but I just, I hung in there. What was the lowest point? You know, I set a lot of goals for myself. I had, you know, the schedule, you know, when the tournaments are, you know, you kind of mentally prepare yourself for a certain time and, um, you know, the physios would give me, a, you know, an appropriate goal and then the doctors would have their own opinion and, um, and I never really met those. And so that was after a few times where I was like, okay, you know, they told me I could go out and I'll be able to hit 20 serves without pain and I go out on that certain date. and. I couldn't do that. It was just like, okay, here we go. Like, what do we do now? You know, what's the plan? See, I already had the rehab, I already had the surgery, I'm rehabbing again. Um, so, just a big thought process. And you've mentioned that patience is not a strength of yours. Terrible, terrible. It took a lot of that. And, you know, most importantly, I had a great team around me. And, I mean, my parents have been through the best and the worst in my life. And, um, and that was a, a tough moment, but they were, you know, we were so fortunate to already have achieved what we had together and, you know, on the court and off the court and, and still being a family. And, um, but yeah. Let's go through a linear way, the career of Maria Sharapova. Okay. So you were born in, in Russia. In Russia. And a very yes. traumatic experience, which correlates to Chernobyl. Yes. Let's start there. Um, well, my mom, uh, actually both of my parents' families were from Belarus, so, um, and uh, when Chernobyl hit was uh, when my mom was pregnant, and they were in Belarus at the time, and, um, and obviously their decision was to try to get away as far as possible, and uh, farthest they went was Russia, <laughs> which wasn't that far, but um, they went up to Siberia, and, uh, and that's where I was born, um, and we lived there for two years, and we moved to the southern part, which was much warmer, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially in the summer and the winters were much better, um, in Sochi, on the Black Sea, so uh, until I was seven, and then since seven, I've been in the United States. And then you went to Florida, and then you went and to I California, did, which is where to, we, we met. united. Yes. Yes. You used to take yes. the tennis lesson after me after with Robert, Robert. Lansdorff, mm -hmm. and even at that age, you were probably 10 years old, probably 11 10, years 11, old. Yeah. You could just see in your eyes the determination, the ferocity. We used to play baseline games. I know, I remember I would feel so bad. I'd be like, Robert, don't make him hit with me because you would have the lesson before me. And then Robert would be like, okay, Justin, can you hit with her for a few minutes? And I'd be so embarrassed, you know. You'd be exhausted, probably cramping exactly. at some point. Exactly, what I do best. <laughs> And uh, I was just thinking, God, this is so embarrassing, you know, he's asking to hit with Justin, and, but um, it was fun. But even at that stage, your ground strokes were probably better than mine. Deep down, did you think that you could beat me even then? I was actually, I, know you do now. I actually preferred to have the lesson with Robert and then hit after, because right. after having a lesson with Robert, I felt like I could hit a, the ball Mach 50 and everyone would just go in, because you just hit ball after ball after ball and you'd get such a good groove. And now you love living here in LA. You, yeah. live, in, you live in Manhattan Beach. Yeah, part-time. 
Yeah. With your fiance. fiance. Yes. 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 Do you yeah. mind if I take a look at, at the ring? It's, it's. I might be in the market. <laughs> this is not I, the. Point. I might be in the market. So really. At, at, at okay, some okay, point, okay. yes. That is very, very beautiful. It is beautiful. Very and beautiful. I had no say in the ring. But even before meeting Sasha, you're you're a big basketball fan yeah, in general. I you used love, to go to a lot of games in all the I cities. I did. I I love the sport, and I you know I, I usually like sports because of tennis, because more scoring. And yeah, I just I've always loved it, and um, it's just kind of we lived around the same area for so many years, but we never, we never, when we said hi to each other, when we, you know, you have the local restaurants and whatnot, but we never really, you know, became friends or got connected, and then all of a sudden it was like, chance. What are the, some of the things you guys like doing away from the tennis? You mentioned that you did get to enjoy some things when you had that break. Yeah. But what are some of the things you like to do? I just enjoy having a normal life when I'm home. When I travel, it seems you're always eating out at restaurants and you know everyone, especially when you're out of the country, everyone's driving you around. So it's those simple things in life, you know, get in your car and go somewhere or take a long, a long walk on the beach. It's just those, I don't know, I cherish those moments. Even doing like the laundry yourself, it just feels so good because you know the right amount of detergent. You know, you got to put the softener in. I mean, the laundry, at things the you can control, yeah. Is horrible. <laughs> so it's always nice. And yeah, checking the mail, doing domestic things. I love that. Yeah. So you're a, you're a domesticated person? When I'm home, right. yeah. But then I feel good when I'm on the road because you kind of, you know, you go to the restaurants and you eat nice food. You take food. care of everything. Yeah, exactly. There's more holding court with Justin and Maria a little later. Welcome back to the World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. Now, back to Holding Court with Justin and Maria Sharapova. Going back to Chernobyl, that really resonated. It has had a huge impact. You have the Maria Sharapova Foundation. Right. Tell us about how you focus on trying to give back to Chernobyl specifically. Yeah, since it was something that, you know, obviously has a big part in my life and um, something that could have affected me and my family in many right. ways. Um, we were very fortunate that, um, you know, we evacuated the area and we left. Um, you know, there's still a lot of damage that has that has happened there and that is, um, you know, still evolving and, and it's still not over. And I think the main, um, you know, my main goal um, in the beginning when I started working with the Chernobyl affected areas was kind of raising awareness in those areas that, although that this incident happened so many years ago um, and, you know, many people have really forgotten that to this day, so many people and so many lives and, and children especially are affected. Um, and that was, you know, that was my goal in the beginning and, and now I'm actually physically doing things and, um, and getting really involved hands-on, which has been really important. I took a trip last year after Wimbledon over there and, and got to see the projects that we're working on and little areas here and there. I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard for those people to, to realize that there's so much more to life than just depression and alcohol to get through things. And, um, and yeah, and, and a lot of families are sick because of the milk that they drank years ago that's affecting their children and um, you know, just kind of a snowball and you, you want to give them those positive thoughts and energy that um, we're, we're trying to help. We'll talk about positive thoughts and energy. I've always said that you are one of the best competitors in sports, not women's sports, not tennis, all of sports. Thank you. Where does that hunger and motivation come from? Is that something that's genetic, you think, or is that something that you've just yeah. learned or you just want to win that badly? Um, I think that in, in life and growing up, I never just got everything on a you know, on, on a nice plate and said, you know, here you go, here's your, here's your free ticket to the United States or um, here's your free lesson with this coach or um, here's this and here's that. And, um, and my family and I, I, I feel like, always had to work for those things. And I've always thought that, you know, the, the reason why I, I was able to achieve so much and the reason why I, I feel like I, I'm able to stay humble is because I was never really afraid of what would happen if I took the chance or my family took the chance to try new things, to, to try to to go you know in a different direction because I, I enjoyed the life that we kind of we had before it was a normal life in Russia is a normal I mean I had friends there and but then you have this new opportunity trying new things and I was just never I was never fearful of going back to what I had and my family wasn't either and we really you know we, we even though we spent so much time apart the moments together were really important and yeah I mean I I grew around them I learned a lot from my dad who was you know so dedicated and so tough and you know he knew when to push me at the right times and then my mom who could care less about tennis and just so a nice offset a nice offset yeah. I mean she was the the ballet and the 
the, um, the classical music and, um, and all the literature coming from Russia and she would bring it and I would do all my homework, I had to finish it. So that was her side of things, so I had a nice balance. You also maintain a deep connection to your fans. You the, have the most friends on Facebook, 5.1 million friends on That's Facebook. Crazy. How important is it for you to stay in touch with them? <clears throat> It's really important, and I've learned that it's it's even more important to be connected on a you know on a constant basis because they want to hear from you. They want to know what's going on. They see you as an athlete. They see you doing shoots and they're at carpet and they see pictures. They see interviews. But sometimes they really want to hear from you, and um, and we, you have to say, say to them. Um, so it's it's a lot more personal. I enjoy it. I, I try to update it as much as I can. But it's really amazing that I have so many. <laughs> State of women's game right now. Mm. Kind of open, yeah. I mean, I and you're back say, up to five in the world. You're back in the yeah. conversation. You fought so hard. Yeah. Wozniacki's won. Great, she hasn't yeah. won a slam. She's under criticism. You're yeah. U.S. all heading towards the U.S. Open where yeah, you've won I before. Know. I know, and you know, probably pro a lot of these girls have a lot to say about Kudo's win at Wimbledon, and yeah. um, I mean, she was kind of the unexpected one as well, and playing such amazing tennis. So it's it's really open, yeah. Maria, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Welcome back to the World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas. This week's Getty Images on Tour takes us back to Maria Sharapova's three Grand Slam titles. Sharapova won her first Grand Slam as a 17-year-old at Wimbledon. She followed that with wins at the US Open and the Australian Open. Thanks, Getty Images. And now, Justin's final thought for the week. I absolutely love the concept of Encore Coaching. Anything that brings the fans more information, makes the sport more entertaining, gives the fans more access, I am 100% supportive of it. How great would it be for the fans and for the people watching at home through TV to know what's going through the minds of the players and how the coaches could help make a tactical adjustment. It could also help raise the level of play. I am 100% bullish on on-court coaching. Thanks to our friends at Wilson, here's a look at the upcoming ATP and WTA tour schedule. You can get a sneak peek at next week's Holding Court with Justin and Marty Fish at StarGamesInc.com. See you next week on the World of Tennis, presented by BNP Paribas.